Welcome to Las Vegas, a world where you can go live out your darkest dreams, a land filled with poor financial decisions, criminal activity, and worse. But what happens when I put 200 Minecraft players in this exact setting? Well, I did just that. In this video, will the players strike it rich or fall into the shadowy realm of the criminal underworld? Will the mafia cause starvation or will the population rise up and reclaim what's rightfully theirs? Keep in mind, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Brace yourself for a Minecraft cinematic experience like no other, and just like in real life, if you die, you're dead forever. Let's stop yapping and welcome to the Las Vegas Experiment. Welcome to Waffle House, I got a Glock, what you want? <laughs> Let me formally welcome you all to Las Vegas, aka Sin City. You see, on the start of day one, players logged on amazed from the site that was before them. In the real world, Las Vegas is known for its casinos. He's already gambling. Wait, does this work? Soggy! Soggy, yeah. I won twice already! Look. Clubs, establishments, and yeah. Homeless shelter? What? But homeless people and losing all your money isn't all that Vegas had to offer. While I was exploring, I bumped into a bunch of tourists who already had some fascinating ideas. What is your plan? My plan? Hit these s and get money. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> Duffson mentioned to me that he wanted to become a pimp. And guess what? He made it happen by opening up Vegas' top-notch club, Slick Back. Whoa, 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 whoa! Wait a second. Slick Back, huh? Excuse me, sir. Oh, Mr. Duffson! Hello! How are you doing? Hello, bitch. I'm a pimp named Duffson. This is a club named Slick Backs. Meanwhile, other players had different ideas on what they wanted to do in this event. I'm recruiting all the homeless people to stay with me. <laughs> Dude, what? <laughs> We're gonna pimp out the homeless people. How much is that? <laughs> Hell yeah. You really cannot make this stuff up. Live in my hotel room. <laughs> yeah. Right now. <laughs> what? 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 Come on. As some players went to go play poker with my good friend Legacy, others had the ability to tour some of the famous establishments within the city, such as the infamous Waffle House. But the employees seemed more like they belonged to a cult rather than a regular establishment. Yeah, what is this? It was a fair trade. Waffle Head, forgive me. What? What? However, the most remarkable spot in the city is Los Pollos Hermanos. You might recall Drip Chicken from Isha's Season 2 video, where he's here in Las Vegas trying to make a living, and his place seemed to be one of the most popular spots in the city. Pretty known for its uh, entertaining dinner experiences. I don't think I've ever been to a date where I've seen someone get shot in the head with a BC-58, so it's, it's something that's out of the ordinary. Hey, do you want to see someone else get shot with a Glock 17? Now that is what you call foreshadowing. And a location where my friend Buckles tends to have some wild times. However, Drip Chicken turns out to be much more than I initially thought. I caught Drip Chicken involved in a drug deal with someone claiming to be LeBron James. You know, <laughs> tough season? Chill. So wh why, why are you in here making drug deals? What's going on? Uh, no, what? I don't know what you're talking about. I decided to snoop around, and that's when I found out that under LPH, there was an illegal operation. When I asked Drip Chicken about it, he said that the Mafia runs things in the city, and this kind of operation is usual here. That's when he informed me about Slockman, the mob boss, and I had no choice but to interview him. Yo, what is up, Slockman? I heard you're the mob boss. Well, what's that all about? Yeah, man, I'm the boss around here. The mafia is back. Well, well what's your role in this? Oh, I, I do the shooting. He he do the planning. I do the shooting. I shoot them all. I shoot everyone. So so what happens if they don't listen to you, Slockman? What, what goes on? Oh, you heard the dude. They get shot. <laughs> No, no funny business around here. No funny business, all right. No funny business around here, Mike. All right, all right, They go, they go in the hole. In this city, Slockman and the Mafia control everything, and they're divided into different groups. First, there are the henchmen, who are like Slockman's top-level officials. They pretty much run the whole city when it comes to law enforcement or fighting back against the Mafia. Then there are regular Mafia members like LPH, casino employees, and hotel staff. They help raise money so the Mafia can continue with his operations. Which honestly made me question if the ramen shop guy was Mafia or not. That's how you uniform? Yeah, probably not. However, now with new tourists and gangs like the Scyther Mafia looking to exploit Slockman, I'm trying to buy weed, bro. Like, <laughs> the Mafia has to ensure that they retain control over the city's funds. 
They aim to prevent any doubts about Slockman's leadership. However, the state announced that in a couple days, there will be a mayor election that could pose challenges for Slockman. To hold his position, he needed to take decisive action. When I asked him about what his plan was, he simply replied with, Hey bro, I'm him bro. <laughs> yeah, no one met with me. With so much going on, I was, I was mugging that kid. I told him that I... The city obviously needed some help, and lucky for me, I had the fantastic opportunity to meet the person right for the job. Well, I guess not. Let's see what happens next. Hello everyone, I'm Slockman. And I'm just gonna keep this message really brief for everyone. Um, welcome to Las Vegas, but this is my city. Wait, what? Hey, yo! Where are we going? <laughs> to the <laughs> boot. <laughs> on the start of day two, Slockman, the mob boss, imposed a tax on the entire population of Las Vegas. You see, throughout day one, the mafia's original plan to get rich was to gain and sell goods from nearby establishments. However, Slockman insisted on taxing the residents individually to maintain control over the city. Unfortunately though, on day two, most people couldn't afford Slockman's steep $300.50 tax, causing them to suffer a hunger effect. In hardcore mode, this meant the risk of death, forcing players to run to the bars to beg for milk. Lucky for them though, the compassionate bartenders provided relief. I need some milk. Oh god. <laughs> However, with no money left for essential resources, players were forced to turn to the two local loan businesses in Vegas to pay Slockman's steep taxes. One of them was Brown's Lucrative Loans, which I encountered on day one. The second was Qualls & Co, managed by a player named Qualls Wonders. These businesses had sketchy reputations and sometimes resorted to legal action against those who couldn't repay their loans. Despite all this, on day two, it was clear who the boss was, and players feared for the power that Slockman had. For all those players who opposed Slockman, they were sent to the underground, where they would meet what Slockman called the Grubs. Boys, we got another one. Boy, Lee, come over here. Oh, they're not serving him. How, how's 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 catch? Fucking ridiculous, man! Absolutely ridiculous. They do not know exactly what they're doing. Even with all the drama in the underground and the authority Slapman built for himself, some folks were just looking to have a good time. A few people went to hang out with our buddy Gordon Ramsay in Hell's Kitchen, which ran like the mini game Overcooked. Do you want me to breathe your air for you and put it inside he of you? He speak English. Like, Jesus. <laughs> Do you want me to literally spell out how to make a beef wellington? How do I make pizza? Bro, sucks. Dude, these guys are idiots. <laughs> you the, Mate, tell me how to make pizza. Oh, bro, Soggy, get me out of here, bro. I don't want to wait any longer. <laughs> they've, been, they've taken literally 10 minutes of my time. I, I get to get in here. Like, <laughs> pizza. And they're incapable of it. stupid. Okay, I believe it's actually time to talk about the Waffle House personality cult which actually went by the name of Ofo, and oh my god were these guys something. During this experiment, these guys made a living by selling organs from nearby players. Very Potato, a leader in Ofo, had a very interesting way of doing things. Give me, give me your money, this is a robber. Mother you're not robbing anybody in my store. <laughs> no, no, here's my apple. Get out, sorry. mother this is my store. Oh, can I buy Waffle? Can I, can I, can I, no, no again, no again, no again. Get out, mother Yet amidst all this excitement and various groups gaining popularity in Vegas, there is one specific group, the Scyther Mafia, aiming to dominate. Hey! Hey, buddy! Hey! Hey, get out of here! What do you mean I work here, bro? What are you talking about? Oh, we're taking a loan out in your name if it doesn't- if, if it don't mind. You. A loan out in my name with the money that you stole from me? Yeah. No, this is crazy! Yo! Yo, yo! I'm just saying, bro, don't try and refute. You know what happened last time. 
They were the troublemakers on day one, and now their sights were set on the top spot in Vegas. Lucky for me, though, I had the fantastic opportunity to talk with their leader. All righty, too, Drew. I'm here. What you want? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know uh, Slockman, right? Yeah, uh, the mob boss who just taxed the entire city? Yeah, yeah. So, pretty much, he is giving us the opportunity on a plan to rob the massive gun vault. Wait, wait, what?! You see, the primary objective of the Scyther Mafia was to get rich, and their leader Tudru thought the only way to do it in Vegas was by scaring people with weapons to make up give up their stuff. On the second day, Tudru discovered a vault housing the Mafia's weapons. The only means of access was through a specific vault key held by the mob boss, Slockman. Tudru considered himself unique, believed he could convince Slockman to hand over the key, thinking he stood out from everyone else on the Vegas Strip. Surprisingly, Slockman agreed and handed over Tudru the key to the gun vault. Slockman, Slockman. Looks like the Scyther oh, yeah. Mafia is uh, gathered in Slockman's plan. office. What game plan? What? You, we can, you can go right now. Hello. Fucking get shot at me, bro. You're a little no. hey guys, watch, watch, Come on, come on, watch. come on, come on. Yeah, watch. What is happening? Oh my god! Wait, where are they going? Wait, 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 wait. Can we go down? Stop. Before you see what's inside the vault, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Creating these videos demand a significant amount of time. Additionally, I'm constantly seeking new members from my Discord community to participate in events. You can find that link in the description. Also, if you want to host amazing events like these, I highly, highly recommend WeppaWet Hosting. They've been absolutely amazing when it came to both the high school experiment and the Las Vegas experiment. And on top of that, our boy Slockman once said, Yes, I support WeppaWet Hosting because it's the best! You can find all this information, link in the description. Now, let's get back to the video. They're in the vault. Yeah. Down. Yo, they're taking the guns. Lockman just executed the entirety of the Scyther Mafia, once again showing the people that he is the boss of Las Vegas, and no one takes advantage of him. Slockman right away ordered a lockdown, forcing players to their rooms, and if they did not listen, he ordered the Mafia to kill anyone in the streets. Following the lockdown, players sought answers, yet Slockman's reaction was to completely stop all questioning and direct skeptics to the underground. Like this one Waffle House employee who chose not to follow Henchman's instructions and as a consequence, faced torture and retaliation. I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat. I'm not a threat. Oh my god. Oh my god. I can't concentrate. I'm deaf. I'm deaf. This is not fair. Oh my, are you serious? Oh my god. What? What is wrong with you? Run, run, run. What is wrong with you? Oh. And this is right. This is just rushing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but there was one person who refused to stay quiet. Grief one who secretly had ties to the mafia wanted revenge. He was the only one of his group who didn't fall into the trap and managed to slip away unnoticed. We want aim to get back at Slockman and also plan to take out his henchmen as well. When he found out that some of his henchmen were alone doing a radio interview in the radio tower, Griefwood's plan was to go in, eliminate them, and slip away unseen. Well, did it work? I guess you gotta keep watching to find out. Well, it's off now, so we go. All right, I'm gonna drop the beat. Ready, guys? Whoa, 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 whoa. Yes, move, 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 now, move. Yes, 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 yes. Some guy just murdered everyone, run! What? Dude, what the f happened? Oh, yeah, 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 oh, my. <laughs> Do not come close, do not come close, do not come close. Let's, let's go another day. Yeah, we want to see, yeah. we want to see, we want to see.
After the death of Reef One and the countless people who were killed in the raid, the people had enough. With the upcoming mayor elections, the players wanted a voice, someone who could stand up to Slockman and put an end to his tyranny. Shoot me, bro! I can oh. die. I cannot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was Slockman. It looks like the people do not like you. They can kiss my ass, dude. <laughs> Buckless, a man of the people who spent his entire time in Vegas hanging around individuals and getting to know them, thought it was time for him to shine. Buckless stood on the ground of emancipation, yet he didn't make it explicitly known that he wanted to get rid of the mafia. Buckless stood on the idea of a police force to help protect the people and make Vegas more safe, so people would stop attacking the mafia directly. The only issue with Buckless's plan is that a player named Trillium was also running for mayor, but wanted to give all the power to the mafia. The issue with this is a large percent of the population is Mafia, meaning Trillium was leading in the polls. Buckless took this as a threat and took matters into his own hands. What are you talking about? What do you, you have a sniper There's, in your hand! What's nah, I don't got a sniper. What's going on? This is not Buck, your what's business. Going on? Go. What do you mean this is not yeah, one of my business? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going all right, on? All right, all right. I'm, I'm going to lose the mayor election to Trillium, and I, I can't be having that, so I'm buying a sniper out. I'm going to shoot. Uh, what? What is he doing here then? Uh, hey, he's a mute. Leave him alone. Uh, he's gonna be the one that shoots him. All right. Uh, he's gonna <laughs> be the one I put all the blame on. Yep. It doesn't matter. Get get out. Go 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 go. go, go. No, 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 Why do I go? Don't worry about it. Get out. Okay. 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 Get out. Okay. Jeez. So like 128. Buckless's plan to defeat Trillium was to take him out before he could snag the crown. Buckless noticed that the ramen shop guy had a hidden sniper and made an offer to purchase it secretly. However, to avoid suspicion, Buckless recruited Vegas' top assassin, Hacker Derp, to manage the dirty work. It was only a matter of time until Buckless' plan would be set into motion. Under the guidance of Slockman and his benevolent guardians of our strip, we've seen safety and cooperation flourish. I believe in maintaining this unique relationship that has kept our streets Fire. secure and our businesses. They shot him! They shot him! After Trillium's assassination, the competition for leadership in Las Vegas ended, and with fear at an all-time high, Buckless ascended as the city's mayor. However, this victory instilled fear in Slockman for the very first time, as he realized that the police force could potentially challenge his henchmen. Tensions brewed between the two leaders, prompting Buckless and Slockman to convene a summit to negotiate terms and ease the conflict. During this meeting, Buckless clarified that his sole aim was to safeguard the city and not engage in a direct confrontation with the Mafia. However, this belief didn't sit well with certain Las Vegas residents who held the Mafia accountable for all the issues in the city. As Buckless opted not to directly address the Mafia, a small orchestra group took it upon themselves to intervene. When they discovered that Slockman was hosting a small chess match in the ballroom, they concluded that this was their moment to take action. Is off limits right now, so you actually can't Yo, clear out, okay, buddy, bro. Clear okay, clear out. out. Well, we're still writing songs. Get out of here, boy. Get out of go write your song. Go write your song. Get, get out of here. Come on, get out. Guys, get out. Come on. Come on. No, we can wait in we're the not... office. Wait in the office. Wait. Yeah, we'll we could wait, wait in the office. office. Wait in the office. The objective of the orchestra group was straightforward. They aimed to eliminate Slockman. However, given Slockman's tight security in the ballroom, they concluded that it would be wiser to anticipate his arrival in the Mafia's office. Anticipating a potential shootout, the orchestra group hoped that Buckless would be forced to draw his hand, potentially prompting a clash between the police force and the Mafia. Yet the outcome turned out to be quite different from what they had intended. Yo guys, let him in! Let him in! More people in here means we can kill him. Buckless is literally nowhere to be seen. Them all, they're dead, they're dead. Stop firing, stop firing. Good. Bro, I shot him. Breaking news. 
the most influential orchestra group was just massacred by the Mafia, while Buckless and the police force were nowhere to be seen. Where was he this whole time? Is he even fit to be the mayor of Vegas? Why were the cops nowhere to be seen? Why are people still dying in the city? Why are you not combating the Mafia? What is your goal to combat Stockman? This very moment became a pivotal point in Buckless's time as mayor, and all eyes were on him on what he was going to say during this speech. Right from the start, Buckless was worried about directly facing the Mafia, yet the public viewed Buckless's handling of the massacre in Slockman's office as weak, asserting that he must state his attentions and recognize Slockman as the enemy. Upon our arrival in Vegas, our sole aim was to experience joy. Throughout our challenges, I've come to know many of you. It's evident that the lives were tragically lost due to the Mafia conflict. The police force's role isn't to engage in Mafia affairs, but to guard you, the citizens. Under my authority, I vow that no more important lives will perish due to the Mafia's actions. We will fight for others. We will fight for you on this very day. I affirm that any threat to my citizens will be prompt, swift action. I vow to do everything in my power to ensure your safety. I am committed to your protection, devoted to your service, and willing to sacrifice my life to ensure the Mafia does not harm you. Consider this a warning to the Mafia. Any harm inflicted upon my citizens will be met with swift and severe consequences. On this very day, Buckless formally declared the Mafia a threat to the well-being of Las Vegas. Throughout his entire campaign and the ongoing experiment, Buckless had portrayed the image of an ordinary tourist, engaging with players, sharing laughs, enjoying the experience, and making new friends. He wanted peace. However, today marked a transformation for Buckless. He assumed the role of a leader, gaining admiration from others. While Slotman grinned behind the scenes, Buckless asserted that he would take decisive action against any threat to the lives of Las Vegas residents, pledging to do everything in his power to protect his people, even if it meant the death of himself. Okay, behind the scenes, we covered the oppression set by the Mafia and Buckless' strategies to counter it, setting the stage for an inevitable clash. But what we haven't discussed are the businesses suffering from Slockman's strict control over his people. I'm talking about the loan businesses. Surprisingly, these two businesses play a more vital role in Slockman's wealth than one might expect. These loan providers not only help folks afford Slockman's taxes, but also secure vital resources on the map. The issue is that during the entire experiment, the Brown Ninja, who owns Brown's lucrative loans, and Qualls Wonders, the owner of Qualls & Co, really didn't get along. In the early part of the experiment, the Brown Ninja discovered that Qualls & Co played a part in the death of his main associate, and had been deliberately sabotaging Qualls & Co all along. Surprisingly, on day three, it was only now that Qualls Wonders figured out what the Brown Ninja was up to and decided to handle things on his own, setting the stage for a full-out war. Four cops right now outside the door. Four cops right outside the door right now. I'm going to take care of it for you, but I need you to give me two minutes. Okay, right, two minutes. Well. Got you. You do your thing, man. Isaac, you guys are hitting the employees first. After you hit the employees, you check the stash. If the stash is empty or has something in it, you grab that, then you're hitting the vault. If there's nothing in it, it's grand. Just come back up and we get out of there. I'm gonna take a... I'm gonna take a loan. I don't think you do. He just fucking escaped from a painting. You can show them to the hall where there is the right. they get go, go through the other one. Oh, Hello? Hello? Come in. Where is that going? Where is that going? Get out of here. Get the f*** out of my business. I got right, 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 The mafia is finally on the scene. Whoa, 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 the mafia just shot at the cops! 
When Isaac's death message appeared on screen, both Buckless and Slockman instantly reacted by deploying both the Mafia and the police force to assert their dominance. However, when Slockman issued the order, he commanded the Mafia to open fire on everyone in the building. This very order led to a Mafia member unintentionally firing at a police officer in the building, setting off the shot heard around the world. And now, after a prolonged buildup, this conflict has finally erupted, plunging the city into a full-scale war! The battle went on throughout the night, but by the fourth day, it seemed like things were finally settling down. When Slockman died, Buckless and the cops managed to take out most of the henchmen and gain control of the city. People felt relieved and safe. Everyone left their hotel rooms and gathered in the ballroom to celebrate, knowing that the Mafia was finished. But despite the apparent victory, Buckless couldn't shake off his fear. He spent the start of day 4 checking out places, worried that they might still have ties to the Mafia. He thought that while Slockman's death disassembled the Mafia, he was worried that they might regroup and become a threat once again. And guess what? Buckless was right. After Slockman died, the Mafia went into hiding, secretly planning to make a comeback. This time it was led by Vibenduck, one of the few henchmen still alive. As Vibenduck and the crew secretly got ready underground for payback, Buckless got word that a couple VIPs will be heading to the city to throw a massive party in the fancy ballroom, clueless about the city's ongoing tension. While Buckless made sure that the city was safe for the VIP's arrival, it was just a matter of time before Vibenduck gathered enough support to try and take over the city once more. Buckless guided the guests through Vegas, showcasing the casinos, Hell's Kitchen, and of course, the Grand Ballroom. Shortly after though, Vibenduck delivered his speech. Together, we're gonna go out there, we're gonna do some shooting, we're gonna take out those damn cops, and we're gonna take back our city. Everyone is going absolutely crazy. Look at all the freaking mafia members, bro. No way, civilians are taking up arms. They're realizing that neither the Mafia nor the police could protect them. When I die, I will be forgotten. In my absence, may someone more suited take my place. Take my place.
It's literally almost like nothing happened. 